Hello everyone, welcome to Tree Talk. Today we're going to be talking about crop tree management, so stay tuned, we'll be right back. Hi everyone, thanks for sticking with us here for Tree Talk. Uh, today we're going to be talking about crop tree management and what does that actually mean and, and how do you do it or maybe who do you find out information about. And uh, again, we got Dave Apsley with us. Dave, thanks for uh, giving us this great topic. I know you know a lot about management, yeah. managing trees and such. So uh, just give us a little po pointers a bit and I know you've got a topic or excuse me, some slides that we're going to go into crop and tree talk about it. Crop tree management is based on this booklet that the Forest Service produced back in the 90s and the lead on that effort was a gentleman named Arlen Perkey. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of forestry stuff can get a little complicated when you get you get into all the details of the measurements you need, but he decided we need a way to communicate with people and a way to, to really improve the growth in our woods. So he came up with this process called crop tree management. Yeah. Real simple stuff. It's it, Trees are plants. Mm -hmm. Plants need light. The more light you give the trees, the faster they're going to grow and the faster they're going to get to where uh, you need to be as far as producing the things that you'd like them to produce. So that's, mm -hmm. that's what we're talking about. Now, will this work on just about every crop of trees or is this only for particular um, it, species? It, it'll work on about any species. Um, probably the best place to use it is relatively young trees. You don't want to use it in a big forest. Um, but if you've okay. got relatively young trees that are, you know, of decent size and you've got a canopy over them, it's a way that you can almost double or more than double the growth rates of the trees that you're managing. And when you do that, you're going to get those benefits quicker. Mm -hmm. Wow. So now you said double. Yes. So you can literally double the growth just by give, well, obviously just giving them a little more sun, and then yep. I guess if you're opening it up enough that you're going to give them rain too, so it's, give them a little uh, water. There's competition for water and nutrients, but the real limiting factor for most trees that really slows their growth is they just get too crowded. And we'll talk more about some examples and how it would relate to like a garden. And okay. so we'll talk about how you can go about doing that. All right. So are, are we? Are you ready to jump? Yeah, into we some can jump slides? right into the PowerPoint. Yeah. So so uh, <clears throat> I guess first off, we're going to talk about tending your lot here. So. Yeah, so tending your wood lot or crop tree management is what we're going to talk about. And whenever we talk about that, um, well, let me jump to this slide first of all. We have a fact sheet uh -huh. that we put together back a few years back. Uh, Randy Heiligman, who has since retired, helped me put this together. So this is kind of a summary of what we're going to talk about. The web page will be up there, but it's on Ohio Line, which is Ohio State University Extension site where we keep our fact sheets. Great. So that's the start starting point. Um, but when you come to when it comes to crop tree management or really anything you do in your woods, you really need to go back to why do you own those woodlands and what are the goals. So, you know, what are those benefits you hope to receive from that woodland? And a lot of people don't think about that when it comes to managing the woods. Well, but that's, that's where true. we always have to start because mm -hmm. we got to pick the trees that are that we're going to manage. And some of those common goals out there, I've got listed here, actually those top two, wildlife and just recreation and liking to live in the woods and having pretty woods are probably the highest objective for most woodland owners. Timber production falls down there a little bit lower, actually quite a bit lower for most woodland owners, uh -huh. but a lot of woodland owners end up cutting timber. And the cool thing about this is you can have more than one goal. You can be managing yeah. for timber and wildlife and recreation all at the same time. Right. So a lot of times the trees we're managing for timber are also good for wildlife mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. And it could be something really unique, like uh, you might be a woodland owner who wants to produce maple syrup. Oh. So if yeah. you've got maple trees That's out there, we can make them grow faster and produce more maple. Mm -hmm. Maple syrup. Interesting. So that's the first thing you need to think about. And all a crop tree really is, is any tree that's going to produce the benefits you're looking for. 
So if I'm looking for wildlife for hunting, I probably want to favor trees that are going to produce acorns or, oh, or if it's yeah. squirrels, maybe hickory nuts. If I'm interested in timber, then I'm not probably going to manage sycamore. I might manage for walnut or cherry or yeah. oak. So, More valuable trees. Right. So crop tree management is really just a technique um, that's based on improving the growth rate of these uh -huh. crop trees. Uh -huh. So how do we decide what a crop tree is? Yeah. Um, first of all, you probably, if you look at this old diagram, and I'm not even sure where I borrowed that from, but if you look at the trees in the understory, those are the trees you're probably not going to get up there and to be the ones to manage. If you picked one of those trees, you would have to open the forest so much yeah. to get light to them that you're going to damage that main canopy. Uh -huh. But you do want trees, if you look, the ones that are called dominant or co-dominant, ones that already have they're up in the canopy. Yeah. Those are the ones we want to manage for. Um, and ideally, the bigger trees we, we grab, the quicker we're going to get them there. But if the biggest trees out there aren't what we're looking for, you can still work with those other trees that are in the canopy. So that's where we're trying to focus. Is so that, that canopy. even that intermediate one would be okay? Intermediate's a little more iffy. Yeah. Um, the odds are a little lower, but if okay. you release several intermediates, you could get some of them up okay. into the canopy. Okay. And we've actually got a site at the Vent and Furnace where we've tried to release some of those intermediates because we had a lot of oaks in that position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and not many in the upper positions and we're doing some work to try to see if we could pull some of those up. Okay. A little bit yet Good. to be determined, but sure. Um, but we've kept some of those trees around. Mm -hmm. Understand? So if we're managing for timber, here's some of the things we want to look for. We want something with a decent, healthy crown. Mm -hmm. We don't want dead branches up there. That's a sign there's something going on. And a lot of times people don't realize a lot of trees either start as a seedling from an acorn or a, a seed. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times after a harvest, they start from a sprout. And as long as that sprout comes off the stump near the ground, it's a good tree to manage. If it's on a high stump, yeah. then we could have some problems with decay later. Oh, so you don't want yeah. high stump trees. Okay. And then other things are just the high quality trees, the right species. Um, you want a tree that doesn't have a lot of defects on that bottom log. The, the butt log is what we call, call it, the, the log where you start the ground and work up, is worth about 80% of the value of the tree. Right. So if you've got defects there, that's not a tree we want to manage into the future. Yeah. We don't want sprouts on it because sprouts become branches and branches create knots. Mm -hmm. And then we don't want those trees that are leaning or that have splits or have potential problems. So that's essentially what we're looking for. I don't have it on this slide, I'll, I'll bring it up multiple times as we go but the other thing is the a tree that is on the right site so say you're oh, trying to manage yeah. yellow poplar uh -huh. which needs quite a bit of moisture right if you do it on a really dry site it's not going to do well or a walnut on a really dry site with thin yeah. soils is not going to do well or say on a particular slant of a uh, hill if it's too steep or too something. dry yeah uh, on the other extreme some of the trees that like the drier site conditions probably wouldn't do well in the swamp they so you want to yeah. pick a species uh -huh. for the location you're on true and so there's a good example of a picture that one of my colleagues from DNR took of a, of a nice um, northern red oak growing on the right site and mm -hmm. nice straight bowl, you know, that clear. That does look like a good tree. Beautiful tree. Mm -hmm. So switch gears a little bit. If, if we're looking at wildlife, something a little different. Mm -hmm. Usually we're talking about mast, and I know we've done programs on mast before, so yeah. it, it may not be familiar to everybody in the audience, but really all mast is is food for wildlife. All trees produce some kind of seeds, yeah. and most of those seeds are eaten by wildlife, but there are some that are much more favorable than others. Right. And, and I've got some more slides to illustrate that. But again, we want trees up in the canopy, and we want the hard mast over the soft mast. So hard mast are things like acorns, hickory nuts, walnuts. Okay. That's available in the winter. It stores well. Mm -hmm. You know, we're getting ready to go into winter. Yep. If you're a squirrel or a turkey or a deer, this time of year, there's not a whole lot to eat. Right. So uh, acorns are really critical. Acorns are something that a lot of species fatten up on mm -hmm. before they go into winter. Uh -huh. So those are real critical for our species that are here year round. Soft mass would be something like a black cherry or a persimmon okay. that's real soft and perishable. It's good for nutrition, but it yeah. doesn't hang around very long. So it's it's some type of fruit. It's typically. more of a fruit. Maybe like a pawpaw or... or Black you cherry, know, yeah, something pawpaw like, yeah. would be an example, persimmon yeah. and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. The other thing for wildlife is that species variety because 
just like humans, wildlife have need a variety in their diet to get their nutrition. Mm -hmm. And they need it seasonally. They need something at all seasons to eat. So if we have all the same species and say it's all persimmon, great fruit, but if it's only available oh, yeah. for a month or two in the yep. year, then it wouldn't be good for those species later on. And then another, just a little exception, if we got some dead branches or some cavities or openings in the tree, there's some other benefits from that because it's a place where nesting sites and things yeah, like that. Yeah. So we can accept a little bit of that with uh, mm -hmm. with wildlife, although it, it could affect how long that tree would live because it, it's a sign of damage or decay. But again, it's like you said, If you, are you managing for wildlife or right. are you managing for, right. you know, to sell that tree later or to harvest that tree, right? Yep. And the good news, we'll go back to that slide, is a lot of those hard mass producers and soft mass producers are the good timber trees too. Yeah. So you can actually have your mm -hmm. cake and eat it too. Mm -hmm. And so here's a fact sheet we put together again on enhancing that mass production. And we do talk about crop tree management in that fact sheet as mm -hmm. well. I worked with Stan Garrett, who was a wildlife specialist with OSU Extension up in the School of Environment and Natural Resources. So when you get into this fact sheet, there'll be tables by species and what kind of food they produce yeah. and what species of animals depend on them. So a okay. good, good resource for folks. Um, and again, can be found on Ohio Line. On Ohio right? Line, yep. and we'll and put that link up. Yep, yep the address is right there. And then there are things like this. Any guess on what that beautiful scarlet tree is? Good for a, an Ohio State theme? Wow, that is, that is a beautiful tree. I don't know. Is that uh, some type of oak? It's not. It is it not could an be. oak. Scarlet, it really, yeah, I mean, scarlet it looks oak would be oak. a yeah. good guess. Yeah. There's a couple hints in the picture. It's oh. green in the background, and that tree's bright red. Oh, I guess so. I never really paid attention so to that. So it's pretty early in the season. Early. So oh. it, that's actually a black gum. Black. Yep. Okay. And black gum is that tree that has almost no yeah. Yep. value. That's true. But for fall color, if I had that on my property and I could see that from my picture window. Wouldn't that be beautiful? That might be one I'd want to make bigger and prettier. Yeah. So yeah. I could make it grow faster too. Mm -hmm. It is pretty good for wildlife though. It'll produce a little bluish black droop they call it, a single seeded yeah. fruit. Mm -hmm. And it's a late fall fruit that's high in fat. So it can oh, actually be good yeah. for songbirds before they migrate. Okay. It's actually late summer, yeah. early fall. Yeah. So just an example, even if just pretty trees is what you're managing for, or I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, if you want to manage sugar or red maples for maple syrup, you could still use this crop mm -hmm. tree management. Mm -hmm. Now that picture there, just to pick on it just a little bit, I see that now that now that you said that there's green in the background, I see more as it goes up and around. There's there's lots of green there, so looks like maybe somebody has already released some to to help it grow a little. Well, bit. that's cheating a is little that, bit. That, that picture is kind of on the edge. I'm actually okay. standing across the road, and the trees of the branches you're seeing around the top are on my side of the road, ah, and okay. that tree's setting gotcha. back. Where, but it it did have but plenty it, of sunlight. Okay, good. Because it's along a road, and it had plenty uh -huh. of room for its canopy to gotcha. expand. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right, but but that's that's kind of what we're we're, we're talking about is being we able are. to re release the top of that, like you're right. Saying. You up at mm -hmm. that top part, and you yep. can kind of see in the picture where the bright red is. That's mm -hmm. getting plenty of that's sunlight. That's getting the sunlight, and that yeah. canopy has been able to expand out a little mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's a good example, and again, that's a black gum, one of my favorite trees, even though for timber they're almost worthless. They are, yeah. yeah. Good, good. So, what about uh, this next this next slide you got here, Dave? So I always like to use because a lot of our landowners and most people mm -hmm. get gardens and yep. plants, and they don't always make the analogy with with a forest. But um, I don't know. Have you ever tried to grow carrots? I have. And I have. Yeah. How how much success have you had? I, not not a huge success, but um, you know we we've pulled a few out. So here's my issue. I go to plant them. Yeah. And those seeds are like really tiny. Yes, absolutely. And you're trying to sow them, and I sow them too mm -hmm. close. You're right. So they're all gone together. They're all together. They're too tight. Mm -hmm. And if I don't thin those carrots out, yeah. And then I get some weeds coming in. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen? Yeah. Well, you you lose your crop, or you may one um, one carrot may be a dominant one that finally gets out of there, and it really covers up the rest of them. Or right. the weeds take the rest of them. Or they're yeah. also small. You they're not worth. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. You end up with little baby carrots, which you wanted those nice, right. nice large. So that's a good example. And if you think about any crop, mm -hmm. like we all know, I, I I'm not a farmer, but I I know that I'm not going to plant corn in inch and inch spacing. Right. The rows are pretty far apart, mm -hmm. and the plants are you know a few inches is apart mm -hmm. within the row. Yep. Well, trees need, there's an optimum spacing there's for the trees. There's a same way for trees, yeah. And with, with trees in our hardwood forest, it's a little more complicated because mm -hmm. 
certain trees have smaller, narrower crowns, yeah. others have broader crowns. So, you know, it's not an exact science and it, it may depend on how much space they need, depends on species. Right. But in general, if they're too crowded, they're not going to grow well and they're not going to do well. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the analogy with the carrot. Now, now we're, we're, what we've been talking about is always the crown. Do we ever have to worry about the root system well, they're, um, they're being kind too of, close together? They're kind of proportional. If we take care of the camp crown, we're going to help with the root system okay. too. Gotcha. Um, but really, again, light is usually what limits the growth. Okay. It's the most limiting mm -hmm. factor. If they've got mm -hmm. plenty of light, mm -hmm. then they're going to have enough crown and the root system's going to be, mm -hmm. be related. Same with nutrients. Usually, you know, we could add some fertilizer and maybe make it a little more optimal, but the best place to invest your time is to get the light to the trees get we're the trying to, to manage. That'll, and that'll take care of it. Yep. Yeah. Sure. So, mm -hmm. kind of imagine this, and I, I don't know how well it shows up. We've got two screens we're looking at, and one shows a little different color and uh -huh. the other one doesn't. But the center tree, right at the center of the crosshairs, is our crop tree. That's the tree right. that yep. we decided, hey, it's a black walnut. We're a for timber, that's mm -hmm. the one. It's crowded. You can see there's trees surrounding it on all yeah. sides. Mm -hmm. So if you can mentally look up at the canopy of a tree and mentally divide it into four segments, what we're trying to figure out is how crowded is it. And in that example there, it, it's free to grow rating is zero. It means it has no room to grow. It's only getting light from above. Mm -hmm. And if it's a free to grow of zero, it's gonna grow very slowly because the only time it's going to get full sunlight is when the sun's directly ahead. Okay. And there's no side canopy getting light, it's just getting a little light from above. Okay. So, so when you say zero ability there, so if I'm looking at those, those pictures on there, I see a little darker color uh, green on those outer trees. If they're touching, is that a zero? Yeah, so what, what we're looking me? at is in that quadrant, if a tree is touching yeah. the canopy of our crop tree, there is no room for it to there grow. So no that, okay. that quadrant would get a zero, and in this case, all of them get done. Don't get points, okay. so it's not free to grow. Okay. This so will there probably, needs to be space between them. This will probably show it a little better. So yes, this tree mm -hmm. has a free to grow of two, and if you look at one and three, there's some room to grow. Yeah, it's getting some light further down. The canopy's going to be a little deeper, mm -hmm. and it's going to get more sunlight. It's going to grow faster. I see. And then a free to grow four would look like that. Oh. So when we walk into most young woods, they have free to grows of zero or uh -huh. one. They're crowded. They're sometimes getting to the point where they're stunted and almost nothing's growing because there's so many trees packed in there they yeah. can't grow very fast. And ideally, if we can get those young stands of trees to have th free to grows of threes or four, uh -huh. we're going to increase the growth rate a lot. And and when you say threes or four, is that is that four feet of clearance? No, it's is just there, four uh, of the, the size. What is the clearance? So that we need to try to shoot for. So a free to grow of four means it's got some space on all sides. Mm -hmm. And really we're looking at a crown touching release. So any tree that's touching the yep. crown, we're gonna say is competing with it's it. zero. It's yeah. that we don't give it points for that. Mm -hmm. But if it's close, we would probably go ahead and remove that competitive really? tree. Okay. So, and we'll so, I'll show some pictures of actual trees to explain okay. that a little bit gotcha. more. Well, here it is. So here's a tree that was on my property. Yeah. And when I took that picture, that tree was about 50 years old. Wow. And that tree was about five inches in diameter. Mm -hmm. And you notice I'm saying was, this was. tree died. Yeah. It didn't do anything to it. It just died. It just died. Because it didn't have enough light. Yeah. I see a lot of uh, trees around it there that's competing, it looks like. It's competing. Yeah. Here's another tree on the same site, like probably 50 yards away, mm -hmm. same soil, same species. They're both black oak. Yeah. Look how big that crown is. And if you look around the, the kind of upper right corner of that picture, there's a little bit of space. Yeah. You can't really tell what's going on behind it. Mm -hmm. But that tree was about 15 inches in diameter, the same age, same yeah. soil, same everything, but it had more room but to grow. But it had room to grow. Now, why it had more room to grow, I'm guessing is probably a previous timber harvest or something happened mm -hmm. before I got the property. Gotcha. So just the difference, uh, two trees the same age, one got to be four or five inches and died, mm -hmm. the other one got to be 15 at the time I took the picture, now it's probably 17 or 18, Yeah. so it's growing and doing well. Nice. Now is there any kind of rule of thumb, Dave, of uh, what that tree needs of, of space? So ideally, 
you want to look at an individual tree. If a tree's competing with it, you take it out. Uh -huh. So we call it a crown touching release. Uh -huh. And usually, you know, depending on the size of the trees, that creates a pretty good gap. Uh -huh. And that's kind of how we, we look at yeah. it. So we look okay. at the individual okay. trees. If the crown's touching, touching, and remember in the winter, the fo foliage out. isn't there. Right. So, so if, you know, if the gap's not more than, you know, mm -hmm. a couple feet wide, then you probably won't need to remove that tree. That kind of brings up another question. When is the best time to do it? When foliage is on or foliage off? I don't think it really matters. Doesn't matter? Sometimes for me, I can see the canopies better in the winter because yeah. I don't have the lower foliage to get so in compete. my mind. Oh, okay. So you, yeah. this is something you could do year round. Yeah. So you could kind of watch it in the summer and say, okay, yeah. And, yep. But it might be easier to take it out in the winter. Absolutely. Absolutely. Less things to catch up if it yep. needs to hang. And we'll so. get to that a little bit here in a Great. second, too. Great. I'm jumping ahead. That's Thanks fine. <laughs> so if you look at this picture, free to grow, these are data from Ohio, Pennsylvania, uh -huh. and West Virginia from Arlen Perky, the gentleman that I referred to earlier. Uh -huh. And on average, trees that have a free to grow rating of zero grow about two inches every 10 years. Well, trees, that's not much. Not a whole lot. No. If we can get it to free to grow four, we can increase to almost four, four and a half inches. So we can double really? wow. just by giving them space. Giving them a little grow. space. So that's kind of what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Here's an example, and I'm not sure how well it shows up in the picture, but the tree on the light, on the left, the bigger of the two trees, is a maple. If you notice, it's two stemmed. It's got a seam running down the middle. Mm -hmm. But see those two little rings around the base of it? Yeah. I, normally we don't do that at the base of the tree, Yeah. What is but that? I wanted to girdle that tree down low to kill it, and yeah. I knew if I did it too high, it probably wouldn't work because there's nutrients that can go up between the middle right. of those two stems. Mm -hmm. Tree on the right is a walnut tree. Yeah, that looks like a good tree. Kind of a little bit smaller. Yep. But you can imagine the way that tree on the left looks, it's probably got a crown that's competing. Yes. So I took a chainsaw, just cut through the bark, and made a complete circle around it. We mm -hmm. call it a girdle. Yeah. Did it a second time. And a few years later, it looked like this. So if you can look to the left, you'll see a gap where the bark fell out. You can see some yeah. fungus grown on that tree. That tree died. Okay. And so the walnut next to it's gonna get a benefit. And then when we look mm -hmm. up, you see the two stems of the, the maple on the left. Yeah. The walnut on the right has branches grown right out over top of where that mm -hmm. tree used to be. Mm -hmm. And yeah. this is several years later. Okay. So I think like six or eight year time frame between really? the very first picture and the second. Okay. So you can see that walnut's now got a lot more space. Mm -hmm. It's growing a lot better. It's not the perfect walnut, but it's one of a few that I have in my woods and I'm able to keep it around where I chances see. are it probably would have died. Right, right. Now, is there a point that you take out that uh, two stem tree? Well, I you? took out the picture, but it mm -hmm. when it's dead, it'll it'll eventually fall. Okay, and it won't be a problem. Gotcha. It is a good point. Um, a lot of people worry a little bit about whether that tree's going to fall and be mm -hmm. a hazard. Right. And and what I tell people, I mean, the odds are pretty slim you'd be there when it fell. Yeah. But I wouldn't want those girdled dead trees over, say, a trail right. or my driveway or, or your house. Right. Then I would probably cut them and get them down. Take it out. Mm -hmm. But you have the option of, um, of felling them or yeah. girdling them and killing them in some way. Gotcha. So just kind of wrap it up. The real benefits of this, if you give the trees you're trying to manage some space to grow, they're going to grow faster. Mm -hmm. The nice thing is we used to tell landowners, well, you need to do timber stand improvement, get rid of all your bad trees. Yeah. Well, if you don't have many good trees, what are you gaining? Well, that's true. So not inst much. Yeah. Instead, we're only looking at our, manage those trees. our good trees, giving them space to grow, and they're going to grow faster. Mm -hmm. It's manageable. It's simple. It makes sense. Okay. So that's what I like about it couple other pointers. Think about that diversity in your woods. I mean, things like emerald ash borer come and kick us in the teeth every once in a while. Yes. So we could use this technique to, okay, my oaks aren't doing as well. I can get them a little bigger. I can keep some of the oaks around mm -hmm. versus having a forest that was all dominated by ash and then the ash I borer see. killed it. Yep. Yep. The cool thing is you release one tree, you're going to make a difference for that tree. Mm -hmm. You kill a bunch of dead trees, you might not make, or bad trees, you might not make a whole lot That's of dead trees. Yeah. So, and then finally, I just remind people to remember to match the species with the site. Pick trees that are going to do well in the mm -hmm. site conditions you have. Okay. 
So um, that kind of wraps up the crop tree. Well, I got a couple more here. Okay. So how many would you release? That would depend on how old the trees are. Mm -hmm. But we normally, a mature forest has about 50 big trees per acre. Okay. So you don't need to release a lot more than 50 an acre. Find your very, very best trees. If you only have 10 really good trees an acre, release those 10 best trees you got. It's usually best to do this when the trees are fairly young, when they're say softball size in, in diameter. Okay. Um, or up to maybe a basketball, but when you get into a big mature forest, then yeah. you probably want to use another technique. Okay. And then if none of these criteria we talked about for crop tree work, go back to why you own the woods. Good example, sugar maple mm -hmm. for maple syrup production. Yeah. Just go pick the best sugar maples out there, give them some space, and you're going to make a difference. Right. And then well, I always like to end with that slide. Absolutely. Get There's people to think about. Always good information to uh, to find, and, and especially on the uh, SE Ohio Woods uh, site. Always, You've always got some yep. good information on there and always some... Um, information of upcoming yeah. uh, thing, uh, events and such. So, so. The, the SE Ohio Woods site is where we post everything about our Day in the Woods programming, mm -hmm. which we just ended our eighth year of that. Right. Um, and we're real happy with the way that's going. So if you're interested, you can actually subscribe at that site mm -hmm. and you'll get automatic updates. Mm -hmm. Or you can email me at the other site and I'll put you on listserv. Okay. And then basically no more than once a month we'll send you a little notice, here's what we got going on. So if you want to learn about yeah. our programs that are upcoming, that's mm -hmm. a good way to do it. That's good. That's good. Um, we're Dave. We're just about out of time. Sure. Yeah, I, as as we go through this, um, I know you said that the day in the woods just ended. I'm assuming we're going to uh, continue next year. Yep. We already have a planning meeting yeah. date set, set in January, and we uh, will put a slate of programs to get together great, again great. for the coming year. Uh -huh. We're actually pretty exciting. We had a donation, and we had some really? additional funding, so yeah. that really just kind of takes the pressure off because we're trying oh. to keep that price down yeah. where we can get right. people to attend. Sure. Sure. If you've not attended a day in the woods I, I encourage you to do so it is a, a great time a, a good event if you're a, a landowner uh, that does enjoy the the woods or, or just wildlife in general uh, you'll learn a lot of stuff you'll meet a lot of people you'll get a lot of information and they also feed you pretty good too yeah so, they do I uh, can't beat that and the other thing is with day in the woods we have so many partners from yeah. and I don't even want to start naming them but if you look at the mm -hmm. beginning of this presentation yeah all those folks from paper mills to agencies all help mm -hmm. us with that yeah. and so we yeah. couldn't do it without all the help absolutely so well until next time uh, thank you everybody have a great holiday and we will uh, see you next time mm -hmm.